SwiftUI gives us a number of valuable ways of controlling the way views are aligned. And I'll walk you through a few of them here so you can see them in action. The simplest alignment option is to use the alignment parameter of a frame modifier. Remember, a text view always uses the exact width and height required to show its text. When we place a frame around it, that can be any size. As the parent doesn't have a say in the final size of the child, we can make some code make a 300 by 300 frame with a smaller text view inside centered. So I'll say here we have the text. Uh, let's do live long and prosper with a frame width of 300 and a height of 300. Now, if you don't want the text to be centered, you want to add the alignment parameters of frame modifier. For example, you could write some code to place this view in the top left corner when running a left to right environment. I'll say here, that's our frame size with the alignment of dot top leading. And you can see it moves to the top left corner straight away. You can then use offset x, y to move the text around inside the frame. Now the next option up is to use the alignment parameter of a stack. For example, we could make four text views of varying sizes in a h stack. So we'll replace this code here with a h stack saying text. Let's do live in a small font of a uh, caption that's quite small. Then a text of long in a regular font. Then text and in a font of title. Then a text of prosper in a font of loops large title. There we go. Now we haven't specified an alignment here, so they're gonna be centered by default inside the stack. It doesn't look great. So you might think to align them all to one edge to get a neater line. You might say let's do a stack here with alignment of bottom. But that also looks bad because each of the text views has a different size and they have a different baseline. Now baseline is a name for where letters like a, B, C, D, E sit on a line, the bottom of the line, A, B, C, D, E. But that excludes the part of the letters that go below the line, like a G or a J or a P or a Y. They have what we call a descender that goes below the baseline. As a result, the bottom of the small text here sits lower than the bottom of the large text below, next to it, sorry. Now, fortunately, SwiftUI has two special alignments that align text on the baseline of either the first child or the last child. And this will cause all views in the stack to be aligned in a single unified baseline. So rather than saying alignment bottom, I'm gonna say alignment is the last text baseline. And now they all sit on the same line. It's real close, but if you just zoom in like that, you can see, boom, they just sit on that same invisible little line there like that. Moving on, for more fine-grained control, we can customize what alignment means for each individual view. Now to get a really good idea of how this works, we're gonna start with some slightly different code. Let's zap we have right now. We're gonna say we have a VStack with alignment of leading. This will contain a text, hello world. Then the text of this is a longer line of text. I'll then place that into a background with red behind it, then a frame width 400, height 400, and then a background of blue. So you can see the VStack itself sits tightly around the two pieces of text with a red background. These two text views have different lengths, but because we use the leading alignment here, they'll both be aligned to the left edge in a left to right environment. Outside of that is the larger frame here has a blue background. And as that frame is larger than the V stack, the V stack is centered in the middle. So you can see it's a red block and then a blue block around it. Now, when the V stack comes to aligning each of these text views, it's gonna ask them to provide their leading edge. And by default, this is obvious. It uses either the left or right edge of the view, depending on the system language. But what if we wanted to change that? What if we want to have one view with a custom alignment? And SwiftUI provides us with the alignment guide modifier for just this purpose. This takes two parameters. First, the guide we want to change, 
And second, a closure that returns a new alignment. And this closure is given a view dimension object that contains the width and height of its view, along with the ability to read its various edges. Now by default, the leading alignment guide for a view is its leading alignment guide. I know it's obvious, but it's effectively equivalent to saying exactly this. We're gonna say that we have for this text, hello world, the alignment guide for leading. Uh, give me the value coming in here like this. So give me our current dimensions. And use the dimensions to send back the current leading alignment guide. So again, the leading alignment guide is the leading guide. guide, guide, it's, it's, guide it's, it's obvious, but it does matter. Use that for the leading alignment guide. But we can actually rewrite this to say, actually, I want to use the trailing edge of the view for its leading alignment guide. What it means is, I just say, when you ask for leading, send back trailing. And now, you can see why I added colors. Uh, the first text is going to move over to the left, so it sits directly above the left edge of the text below. The VStack will then expand to contain it, and the whole thing is still centered within the blue frame. Now this result is different from using the offset modifier. If you offset a text from its original dimensions, from its original position, sorry, the dimensions don't actually change. Even though the resulting view is rendered in a different location, that's a rendering location, the actual frame has not changed. If we'd offset the first view, rather than changing its alignment guide, then the VStack wouldn't expand to contain it. Now, although the alignment guide closure is past your view's dimensions, you don't have to use them if you don't want to. You can send back a hard-coded number or make some other calculation. For example, we can make a, a tiered effect for text views by multiplying the position by minus 10 as we work our way through. So I'll say, uh, let's delete some code here. Uh, so no more hello world. Instead, I'm gonna say we have a for each of zero to 10 with one position coming in. Let's do a text view saying number, then that position, like so. But I'll add an alignment guide here with the leading edge being computed. Uh, we'll get dimensions passed in, we'll happily ignore those. I'm gonna say alignment guide for leading edge is a double of our position times by minus 10. And now we get this sort of tiered approach here. They move themselves across the way as they need to. For complete control over your alignment guides, you've got to make a custom alignment guide. I think that deserves a mini video all of its own.